Hey guys, it's Roxy with Roxy's Broadway Breakdown, and today I'm going to talk about propography and give you some examples. So think of Gene Kelly and Singing in the Rain with the Umbrella, or Fred Astaire and the Hat Rack in Royal Wedding, or when Jerome Robbins choreographed the Bottle Dance and Fiddler on the Roof. Always so exciting, and you hope gosh don't let those guys drop that bottle um all right so let me just show you what i'm talking about because this is given to you all the time in musical theater it's like we just are expected to go around and pick up props and dance with them that's the magic of it it's just like we all know the choreography at one time in a classroom or on the street or in a bar or wherever so let me get to it all right, so if you have seen Annie a thousand times, you know that the orphans, they start It's a Hard Knock Life, scrubbing the orphanage, and um, they go bump, 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 bump. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. All right, so in rehearsal, that's all mimed, you know, at the beginning. I mean, it was when I did Annie, we were just miming the rags, we were miming the buckets, and in theory, it all works out great. Um, and then they added the buckets and the rags, and then our brains had to multitask. And it was like, oh, well, there went the rag, and our buckets were flying, and it was like, oh, whoa, okay. So, you know, you have to you try to get the prop as fast as possible so that you get used to working with them, and then it becomes seamless. You you start to get very comfortable with whatever it is, whether it be a rag, a bucket, whatever. And you're because you're when you're singing and dancing, you want to concentrate on the choreography, and you don't want the prop to distract from the number or the dancing you just it has to become a part of you and you you don't want the the thing to go flying or you know whatever to distract from you and your performance that's the thing of it you know you can't have things flying and tumped over and then you're going and grabbing for it it's just got to be seamless you just it has to be one with you and the prop should enhance your performance not distract from it. Same thing, if you've got to actually be dancing with something, you know, and you're used to doing turns, um, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, whoa, this is changing my center of gravity. Again, you're not used to doing something like that. Get the prop as soon as you can. Something I like to call chairography, in my hair and the Kit Kat girls danced with chairs, um, you know, again, if you've got something even bigger like that to dance with or on, and you've got to be doing kicks or laying across them or whatever, you know, you've got to really become very comfortable with the chair. In Thoroughly Modern Millie, they had desks in Forget About the Boy that they did some of the tap dance in. I saw this in Mean Girls, I saw this in Jagged Little Pill, and um, they, it was like deskography. They made, they were on rollers and they made formations with it. I'm sure that was mimed at the beginning until they got the actual desks. And so when you have something very cumbersome like that, that you have to be moving on stage, you have to be very conscious of, you know, how, how much do I need to push off or you know so that I'm not bumping into the next person I mean that that all has to be rehearsed very seamlessly um, I mean very well so that it's seamless and you're not rolling around or sliding and things like that if they're gonna use something like that so again the logistics of these kinds of things need to be thought through um, and just hats you always you know, are going to work with in musical theater, canes, feather boas, things like that. Just get them as soon as possible so you're comfortable with them. All right, subscribe to my channel, check out all my other videos, give this one a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in my next.